Hmm. Your inner awareness never stops talking to you. It never stops informing you. It never stops directing you. Right. It never stops giving you the path you need to follow to get to where you want to be. You just learn to ignore it. Hmm. And that is some painful shit. Wow. Because you realize that, man, I could have had a V8. <laughs> <laughs> I could have I could have been enjoying this if I would have just obeyed my own inner awareness. Right. Right? So, but, and, and I, I want to give some wisdom and some help to those people who are, who are watching who may feel like I've been in this numb position forever and, and they're feeling like, okay, now I'm feeling the sense of regret. I'm feeling the sense of, damn, I should have, you know, the old coulda, woulda, shoulda kind of thing. And now they're sitting at a place where they're like, damn, I missed out on this and I didn't have time and I should have done this and I should have this by now and I should have beat this by now. Reassure those people why, by embracing their inner awareness, everything they thought they had missed out on is still present in front of them right now. Yeah, as long as you have desire, your inner awareness is still working. And what I mean by that is desire is just a positioning indicator that there's something to put yourself in position with to enjoy. As long as you have desire, as long as that's still alive in you, you have an opportunity to enjoy your life. When you stop having desire, you got to worry about that. Mm. Because every living thing has a desire to be here. When you lose your desire, you could you could possibly be on your way out. Hmm. Now, here's what happens why a person will end up losing desire and not know what they want. Because you, you're seeking validation from everybody. Hmm. You're not focused on yourself. You went yourself 24 hours a day, but you, were, you have lost sight of yourself because you haven't been following your inner awareness. You've been following out awareness, which means you've become good at knowing what the trends are in the world, but you don't know what the trend is in yourself. Ooh, that was good. You don't know what the trend. If you don't know what the trend is in yourself, you lost. Hmm. I have clients all the time that when they initially come to me in the early stages, they come to me saying the same thing. I don't know who I am. I'm lost and I feel out of place. Hmm. All those are GPS. That's GPS language. <laughs> That's inner awareness language. That's saying, I'm not following my inner awareness. I, I stopped following a long time ago. And because of that, I don't know where in the hell I am. Hmm. Inside myself, I don't know where I am. So, and, and this goes to uh, the coaching program we're talking about now, leading the pack. When those people come to you and you aware that these are GPS signals, what is normally the first step you tell them to take to get themselves out of that position? My first step is I draw them back to remembering what their first responsibility is as a, as a living being. Your first responsibility as a living being in this world is to accurately represent the internal world to the external world. You have, mm -hmm. you have, you have a slimmer chance of survival or living if you don't know how to communicate what's going on inside of you to the outside world. Mm -hmm. You can literally starve to death if you didn't know how to tell people that you were hungry. Wow. So, a baby screams and yells to let you know it's hungry because mm -hmm. it's communicating to you what's on in the internal world to the external people that can help facilitate and support what's going on inside. That that responsibility never changes. See, the problem is when we when we start following other people out of awareness, we start misrepresenting what's going on inside ourselves. So how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm great. I'm great. Couldn't be better. Line your ass off. <laughs> You know, right. you compete with other people. So you act like if things are better than what they really are. You'd be broke and act like you got a whole bunch of money. Right. You doing what? Misrepresenting your reality. Mm -hmm. What does misrepresenting your internal world do for you? Keeps you out of position. So you can get a whole bunch of money and still be out of position and they never fulfill you. Right. Money don't put you in position. Mm -hmm. Your inner awareness puts you in the right position to enjoy whatever you are doing with your life. If you want to enjoy your life, you need you need to reconnect to your inner awareness. Mm. That's what the leader of the pack course is going to do. Help you reconnect using inner awareness technology. Help you reconnect to your own spirit, mm. which is always working for you even while you sleep. So just as a human being, what is my connection to my spirit? How does that work? My great grandmother used to tell me a story. She said the story, she called the story the secret of the secret lives of spirit. Hmm. And she would say, Your spirit does not need to sleep because it's not physical.
So when you go to sleep at night, your spirit is traveling into realms and places to get things done on your behalf. Hmm. The only thing that you need to do is listen to your inner awareness to put yourself in the right position to take advantage of the moves your spirit is already making. The problem has been we have not been in the right position, so we keep missing out on the joy that's already been done for us. The job has already been done. The world wants you to believe you have to work hard. Listen, our ancestors worked hard as hell right? when they were cap cap captives and in slavery. Mm -hmm. You can't work no harder than that. It didn't bring them any closer to joy and happiness. Right. Hard work is not the key to a, to a human being, to a being that has superior technology inside themselves. Mm. You think hard work got anything to do with using your superior technology to create something as simple as happiness? Wow. That's good. That's really good. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we got all this superior technology and we're not using it. That's why life is hard. Mm. So life is only hard because we accept the matrix telling us it's hard. So we engage ourselves in those roles to make sure that it's hard. We've been using one of the most important parts of our inner technology to get ourselves to believe it's hard. It's our imagination. Our imagination. <laughs> we've created all sorts of imagining, all sorts of figments of our imagination right. that makes it hard for us to live our life. When we can create and use our imagination to create just an opposite story. We need to learn how to follow our inner awareness in order to re reconnect with our path of least resistance. Speaking to the, the leaders that are listening to us right now, now there's an old saying that goes, the way you can tell you're an ineffective leader is you look behind you and nobody's following you. So I don't think I don't think that's the most way to tell you're an ineffective leader. Yeah, I was just about to ask the question. How do you define or if as a leader myself, how would I know that I'm not being effective? You don't know how to live. Mm. Okay. A leader is ineffective if they're not enjoying their life. Mm. Okay. To be able to make a whole lot of money, that's not, what's, what is that? That's not but paper. In a system where things are socially constructed to make a whole bunch of money, what the hell is that? It's just a transaction. But in a world where everybody's working against, against the idea of happiness and joy, but a whole, you got a whole system that wants you to be a slave, achieving happiness is the greatest accomplishment. It's the Holy Grail. And that proves that you have a relationship with yourself that is so in alignment that all this outside shit can't do nothing to disrupt your peace. Wow. Now you achieve that, shit, money, money come looking for you. Because, and I believe money has a role in the universe also. Yeah, yeah of course. It's a measurement of energy. So you become the magnet of this beautiful energy, right? Mm -hmm. whatever, the, whatever the currency is. Because remember, currency is not universal. Right. Every, Different countries you go in, they got a different currency. That's a fact. So you, so money is not a universal concept. Mm. Currency is. Ooh, that's good. When you learn how to work with your own currency, then no matter where you are, you got money. <laughs> mm. That's good stuff. Yeah. Now, I, I, I want to, uh, something we talked about in the earlier segment, because we have leaders listening right now, and, and I believe your definition of leadership is contrary to a way a lot of the traditional Right. Uh, institutes and courses and classes or whatever teach it, and you were specifically saying it's about leading by example, specifically. Right. So I'm on, I want you to build out a little bit on how that your definition of leadership is different and how you employ that into your, your course. Well, I say this. Leadership is always an example setting thing. Because people will observe what you say and then watch what you do and watch the results that you produce. And if you are not producing the results that you that you promise to produce, nobody should follow you. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Because what it is demonstrating is that you lack clarity. Mm -hmm. You cannot produce results that you claim to produce if you don't have clarity. So a lot of people are just repeating what they hear other leaders say to make it look like they know what they're talking about. But you have to go where your clarity is. Where does clarity naturally come from? Enlightenment is not an outside light. You don't say outside outlightment. <laughs> It's yeah. enlightenment. Right. So where does the light come from? From your inner awareness.